How's it going? Welcome to Movie Mortal. Today, I'm going to discuss what is Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge. Mortal Kombat Legends is a reimagining of the events of the first Mortal Kombat game in Mortal Kombat 9. I say reimagining because they change a lot of the stuff from the original story and even from the soft reboot. It opens with Hirasashi with his son talking about the resilience of scorpions. They go home to an empty village and they get attacked by the Lin Kuei. So there's an extended scene of Hirasashi fighting a bunch of ninjas. They go back to their home. He sees all the guards are dead and that his wife has been killed. So he just goes on a rampage and just wipes out every ninja he sees. After all of the Lin Kuei are dead, he notices that Sub-Zero has his son so Sub-Zero locks him into a block of ice and kills his son and then kills him. Then we are introduced to the three main fighters from Earthrealm, Liu Kang, Johnny Cage, and Sonya Blade. It gives you an introduction of what kind of character they are, like Liu Kang is a calculated fighter, Johnny Cage is essentially an egomaniac, and Sonya Blade is a soldier on a special task force. Most of the character designs are based off of their MKX designs, like Liu Kang, Katana, Jax, Sonya Blade, Reptile, Quan Chi, Kano, Raiden, Scorpion, and Goro. I'm not sure what character model they used for Baraka, but thank god they didn't use that awful design from MKX. What they should have done is modeled them after their classic skins. For most of them, it should have been their MK1 designs or whatever game they first showed up in, like Reptile, first showing up in MK3. Or what they should have done, which would have made the most sense considering the storyline that they're going for, is that they should have modeled them after their MK9 design, since that is still the original trilogy storyline, but it's just retold. So it's more similar to this story, and follows the same events that the character models are based on. Then we cut to Nether Realm, and Scorpion is chained up and about to be tortured by a demon, but he escapes and kills a bunch of the demons, and he is trying to find Shinnok, who is the ruler of Nether Realm. So he goes to the top of this building and finds Quan Chi, thinking he's Shinnok, but Quan Chi mentions that Shinnok has been imprisoned, and Quan Chi wants Scorpion to go to the Mortal Kombat tournament, steal back Shinnok's amulet, so Quan Chi can use it to free Shinnok. And he's going to do this under the guise of being one of Netherrealm's champions. Although, I'm not sure how he can do that, because the rules of Mortal Kombat is that you fight for the realm that you were born in, not the realm that you side with. So he would have to fight for Earth Realm, and he can't fight for Nether Realm. So he agrees. So we see all the ships going to Sang Sung's island, and they go in to the tournament area, and it shows all the warriors. It has a few cameos, like Mutaro's there. And then Sang Sung comes out and introduces the tournament. He says that the Elder Gods created the tournament to protect the realms from being invaded, which is technically true. 
It was created because Shao Kahn wanted to take over the realms. And then Sang Tsung says that he is the champion of the last nine Mono Combats. But Goro has always been the champion of the last nine Mono Combats against Earthrealm. I don't know why they felt the need to change that. And it kind of causes a problem, but okay, I guess. And also, the champion of Mono Combat doesn't age. So, how did he get so old? Anyways, so then, he has Kano bring Jax out, and they're trapped in an arena, and Sang Tsung decides that if Jax wants to leave, he has to fight Goro. So those two fight, and Jax loses. Goro is about to kill Jax, and Raiden interferes because it was not an official Mortal Kombat fight. During this fight, Scorpion sneaks away to go get Shinnok's amulet. He finds it, and Raiden meets him there and tells him that he has a choice in whether or not to do this, but it doesn't show yet what he did. So then they drag Jax off, and Sang Tsung announces that the tournament officially has begun. The first fights are... Johnny Cage versus Baraka, Sonya Blade versus Reptile, Liu Kang versus Katana, and Scorpion versus random Lin Kuei guy. Liu Kang, Johnny Cage, Sonya Blade, and Scorpion all win their fights, so they are now moving on to the tournament. The tournament bracket in this movie is so messed up. I just made an entirely different video on it. Then we see on the graph the black dragons coming onto the island to stop the Earth Realmers from reaching the final round. Liu Kang, Johnny Cage, and Sonya Blade are camping out in the woods and hear a commotion, so they go check it out, and it's Scorpion killing a bunch of the black dragons. So they have a conversation explaining the tournament, what happens if Outworld wins, which Outworld will merge with Earthrealm, and Shao Kahn will pretty much kill all the Earthrealmers. The Black Dragons find those three and attack them and Scorpion. Sub-Zero shows up and Scorpion attacks him. Sub-Zero is really confused about what Scorpion is talking about when he's talking about revenge. And Scorpion eventually throws himself and Sub-Zero off of a cliff and they land on a spike. After all the red dragons are defeated, Sonya Blade goes to find Jax. So she finds Kano, and he's holding Jax. In order to stop her from getting to him, he opens a bunch of cages that has a bunch of monsters, including Mucharu in them. She fights them, and she's losing, but Johnny Cage comes in and saves her and just starts kicking all of the monsters asses eventually they get to Kano and knock him out and they save Jax so while this is going on Liu Kang goes to Sang Sung's throne room so now that he is there he has to fight Goro to determine who the champion of Mortal Kombat is but first Sang Sung makes him an offer that if he yields to Goro, he can go to Outworld and live as a king. Liu Kang declines this, but makes the issue from before an actual issue in this movie. Because he says, Is that how Shao Kahn got you to betray your world? I am not as weak as you, Shang Tsung. Which means that Shang Tsung is still from Earthrealm, but the rules are you have to fight for the realm you're born in, so again, he can't be the champion. And also, why does Liu Kang not have to fight Sang Tsung? Since he's the champion of Mortal Kombat. So Liu Kang is fighting Goro. He is about to lose, and Goro is about to kill him. Something I noticed 
has Liu Kang ever defeated Goro outside of the video games? I seriously cannot recall a single time other than the video games that Liu Kang has defeated Goro. Anyways, so then Scorpion saves him by shooting his spears into Goro's head and killing him. Now, Sang Sung tells Scorpion that he has to fight Liu Kang because he is now the champion. So, Scorpion is getting ready to fight Liu Kang, and Raiden reminds him there's always another choice. So instead, he goes after Sang Sung, yields to Liu Kang, so now Liu Kang is the champion of the tournament. So Sang Sung leaves, and Scorpion kills Quan Chi for revenge for killing his family. And just sits in the throne room as the entire island collapses. And all of the Earth Realmers leave. And then we get the sequel bait of Sang Sung talking to Shao Kahn. And Shao Kahn says that they are going to wipe out Earth Realm. And that's the end of the movie. Despite all the problems that the tournament bracket has and the rules of who can fight for what side being all messed up, I did enjoy this movie. I think it's an interesting take on the Mortal Kombat story. The animation and voice acting was really good. And honestly, I'm looking forward to the inevitable sequel. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like so YouTube can start noticing my channel. If you want to see more videos on movies, or why a movie got a rating by the MPAA, be sure to subscribe. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at MovieMortalYT. Thanks for watching.